a lot has been going on since our last episode. Um, among other things, we were mentioned by another Polish vlogging channel from, from Florida, Dudki. If you guys haven't checked them out yet, uh, you should. It's a really entertaining, cool daily vlogging channel. So um, a lot of you would probably like it. Um, we're, we're receiving a lot of advice from you guys and um, we completely appreciate and are super grateful because we know it's all coming with good intentions from a great place. Everybody's trying to help, which is awesome. It's really, you know, one of the best things that can happen to you when you are in a situation like ours because all that information, every single bit of information we're getting may be useful at some point. So we're checking it all out. But it also leads to a lot of, what do I call it, misconceptions? Um, a lot of confusion. Misunderstanding. A lot of confusion. Definitely a lot of confusion about, um, you know, cancer treatment and the methods of cancer treatment in 2019. So um, by all means, we're, we're, by no means we are doctors, by no means we are scientists. We are just patients, Blani specifically, but I'm the husband. We're both equally involved in this. So naturally, we have been studying all this, Googling everything, reading a lot of articles ever since this started. Since June. Um, in my actually, yes, since June 13th, 2016. In my case, and I never talked about this on the vlog, I never really talked about why I am really in USA in the first place, why I stayed here in 2001. And one day, we'll, uh, one day I will talk about it. One day I, I will make an episode and give you guys the whole story of how I really got to stay in US. But for now, I'm just gonna say that in my particular case, I actually studied this subject a lot earlier. Um, I've done a ton of reading in my life about cancer and how to treat cancer, and I had really strong reasons for it. And today we're just gonna talk to you about uh, what we think um, uh, is the right approach to the subject. We are somewhere in southern Delaware today in a more or less undisclosed location. <laughs> where, where is this really, Blani? Where are we? It's kind of near. It's called Felton, Delaware. Felton, Delaware? Mm -hmm. Have I ever been here before? No, definitely. <laughs> well, you know what? We went to... Um, it looks like nobody's been here before. <laughs> we went to that <laughs> campground kind of near here. Oh, okay. Well... Do you want to explain why we're here? Sheridan is in this um, school event thing called Odyssey of the Mind. And they're competing today, so we get to go watch it. Which actually has nothing to do with the uh, main subject of today's video, but you got to start the day somewhere. <laughs> so number one, to uh, figure out how to treat cancer, we have to figure out where the cancer is coming from. It's, it's the same process with every single disease or illness people have. So Blani, why don't you tell people, what do you think? Where, where does cancer come from? Well, I personally think cancer comes from, I mean, naturally people have gotten cancer. We don't cancer. know, yeah. that's the correct answer. Cancer. We just don't know. Well, what I was going to say, I feel like cancer, we've had it for centuries and obviously rates are increasing right now. The only thing that makes sense to me is our environment is massively polluted. That's, to me, that's what it's from. Yes, absolutely. It's, it's a very complex problem. That's the thing. There is no one answer to it. And uh, you need to consider a lot of different factors. Uh, we live in a very polluted environment. Uh, our genetics definitely have something to do with this, although purely claiming that cancer is genetic and it's passed from generation to generation is also wrong. Because we... I want to explain that because it's something I didn't know before I had cancer. Whenever people say that, oh, my mother had cancer, so I'm likely to get cancer. We're used to geneal genetics, I'm sorry. We're used to genetics being something like, my mother had blue eyes, so I might have blue eyes. But cancer risks are not like other DNA things, for instance. What I was told by my doctors is having a genetic risk for cancer simply means that you don't have the protective barrier to prevent that cancer from entering your body. So, for instance, most of my family was down in the South and they were in an entirely different environment and exposed to different chemicals and different things than I am up here in the North. It's my belief that something entered my body here in the North that 
I was not exposed to in the deep east Texas woods, you know? Like, the water that I was drinking, that I now see many articles about the place where I lived for many, many years having water run off from firefighting chemicals that are known carcinogens. So I believe this um, risk of cancer being genetic kind of makes people feel like, well, if it's genetic, it's like me having blue eyes. I have no control over that. And while I don't think I had control over my cancer, I do believe somebody somewhere has control over all of these people getting cancer. And we need to pay attention to that. And I don't think people are paying enough attention to that. The proof... Um to the fact that genetics are partially responsible for this and um, may cause cancer with some people and may cause nothing with others is very simple. It's all intertwined. Yes, um, all of us live in the same environment. Let's say, you know, people in the little area of Delaware that you just referred to, uh, there were many people living <laughs> there in the same period of time and some of them will get cancer. Actually, there's a high, there's a high percentage of cancer cases mm -hmm. In, it's one of the among top, people coming from that area well it's one of the top states in the united right. states per but, capita of cancer but also other people that live there never got cancer and but, that means they simply were somehow better protected their immune system was stronger and what i just said is exactly it the genetics throughout the united states are, should be spread somewhat equally it's yes. not like um all of the people who have this dna live along the mississippi river so they must be that must be why they're getting cancer but the, the real situation is that all of the runoff from all of this fertilizer people are using is along the Mississippi River. And if you look at a map of the United States and see cancer concentrations, you can see that it's more concentrated in certain areas. And if it were purely genetic in that, like having blue eyes and we have no control over that, then why would it not be more equally spread? It isn't more equally spread because there is an environmental factor that is infiltrating our bodies, in my opinion. So, yeah. this is everything we need, plus you have a coin? Yeah. Okay. I'm ready, are you ready? All right, let's go. Let's go. The amount of factors that need to be considered in every single person's life is so huge that that simply leads to us not really being able to tell where cancer comes from. They don't even try. Yes. I mean, um, there are some people who try. I don't want to say that wrong because we do know scientists who are trying. But in general, the average patient when I was diagnosed, no one said, where have you lived the past 10 years? What type of cosmetics have you used? What type of foods were you eating? I haven't ever been asked those questions. Right. Uh, there is no central database that would try to get all that data, uh, somehow um, organize it and figure out the conclusions, and then maybe we would start seeing some trends. We know parts of the information, like aluminum in perfume is uh, contributing to people getting cancer. Asbestos in the walls is contributing to people getting cancer. Preservatives and chemicals in food are definitely contributing to people getting cancer. The FOAs and the firefighting chemicals, which are also on Teflon pans. Right. Um, there's, there's toxic substance, substances in our ground, in our walls, in our water, in our food. Uh, and it's very difficult to lead the fight in current world to not be exposed to any of those. Because every single day, literally every day, we're finding out that they found some new substance somewhere where it shouldn't be that might have been causing cancer in people for the past, you know, number of years. Another thing I wanted to bring up is this documentary we watched called Stink. And it was eye-opening because they basically told you that there are zero regulations to prevent companies from putting chemicals in perfumed items that are very harmful to us because they can call it a proprietary product. And it's a proprietary smell, and it may very well be cyanide or something crazy like that, but there's no regulations to prevent this because then they can hide it because they don't want people to know what their particular blend of perfume is. And there's no regulations to prevent that perfume from being something incredibly harmful to us. 
Tam jest scena, na której się przedstawienie odbywa. Ale super światło tutaj, normalnie do nagrywania czegokolwiek. Na scenie pewnie lepsze światło. Całkiem spora sala, to znaczy gigantyczna wręcz sala, jak na e, warunki szkoły średniej, nie? Całkiem nieźle. The point is, this problem is so complex as we're we have illustrated this far, I hope, that it's very difficult to really say, to really give a, you know, defined diagnosis that your cancer came from there. Your cancer and, came from drinking wine. Right. Your cancer came from drinking the bad water in the right. town. And in, in, in other cases, you know, let's say we are treating a very singular disease when someone is complaining about their knee and we figured out that while they drive the car, the knee is in a different position than it should be and that's causing the problem. So once we eliminate that problem, we give them different car or we modify the existing car or we change their driving habits and their knee is starting to get better, the symptoms are going away, we can say uh, successfully we've been treating this problem because we removed the cause, now your body is fixing itself, your immune system is reacting the way it should and things are getting back to normal, wonderful. But in case of cancer, because the problem is so complex, so crazy, crazy complex, uh, how do we treat it? And hence the whole confusion, hence so many different uh, suggestions, ideas, treatments that worked before. But what do we know, Blani, about um, treating cancer with different people and different cases and different types of cancer? Well, everything works differently for everybody. Exactly. Just, just like the DNA we were talking about, might the door might be open and the cancer was allowed to get in. Very particular types of cancer have different things that will help them. In fact, I was reading an article about colon cancer, and there are some super responders. So they will give them this very certain type of medication that they were testing, and this woman her cancer went away within some insanely quick period of time, but 90% of the other people given that same medication, nothing happened to them and they still, it didn't help them at all and they still died. So this particular article was saying how funding needs to be given to find out who those super responders might be because her family is very happy she's alive, but does the pharmaceutical company have enough money from this drug Will they find enough super responders to make it worth their while to invest in it? And so that kind of goes along with all of this, the advice that we're given that is very, as David said, I want to say as well, appreciated that people want to offer us advice that they think is going to save my life. I mean, who could fault? Right. Who could look negatively at that? But on the other hand, we have looked at many, many things and I've made the choice to do chemotherapy, which has been working very well for me. It doesn't always work for everybody, but it has been working well for me so far. At some point, though, 2%, 2 to 5% is the survival rate or something for stage 4 breast cancer. I don't really focus on that because what if I'm that 2% and I spent 10 years of my life in misery thinking tomorrow I could die? So I don't really think about that. But I want people to know that that 2% is there no matter what I do. It's going to be there. And I don't want people to think when I died it was because I didn't take their cure idea of like eating um, apricot seeds or whatever else. I'm doing what is best for myself and my opinion. And so far my side effects have been minimal. I haven't really gotten... I probably had less illnesses even with my immune system being down than most people that yeah. you know so we have gone through a lot of choices to come up with my current treatment yes we're, 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 we don't want to talk about um, all the methods that we think don't work or are wrong for this another reason we're gonna talk about what we think is right and uh, one of the most common sense ideas that really make a lot of sense to me is you treat cancer with a complete lifestyle change um, a lot of you brought up this book by David Serben Schreiber, 
who um, was able to keep his brain cancer at bay for 14 years. The guy survived for 14 years by changing his lifestyle. And he was so, told he would die. And yes, he was a doctor himself. He was told by his friends that he had maybe two years if everything goes well, the tumor was inoperable and, it, and you couldn't treat it with any known drug. So uh, despite that, by changing his lifestyle completely, he was able to survive for 14 years. He gave himself he gave himself an additional 14 years of life, which is absolutely amazing. So how do you do that? Um, our dogs have uh, something to add. Uh, how do you do that? You you basically it, it has to be across the board. So you start doing more exercise, or you start uh, doing exercise you haven't done before. If you have to move, you move. You try to find a better area, area we that is move. less polluted. That is something we cannot do. You change your diet, so you try eating healthier, you try burdening your um, body, your immune system less with substances that are hard to digest, uh, burdening take a lot of it energy less to. And supporting the immune and, system. And on the other hand, you, you try to support and build up the immune system and give your, your body as much good, healthy food, immune system supported food as possible. We won't go into details here again because it's a subject for a whole another video. It's a, it's a really long conversation, but. Um, you know, a lot of you ask if we have been doing this. Absolutely, yes. We have been researching everything we can on that subject. We are, you, you're drinking a lot of water by nature. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, naturally, mm -hmm. you're drinking a lot of water per day. So a lot of people also suggest that, you know, drink more water. You're absolutely drinking. I actually drinking. don't drink. I mean, I've never been a soda drinker. Right. I drink tea now, but I never really drink. Really, that's all I ever drink is yeah. water and tea. Um, so and it's just um, you I never like it. you never smoked. Someone mm -hmm. also asked about that in the comments. Did Blani smoke? No, she never smoked. Uh, you you drink very little alcohol. I mean, it's it's trace amounts. So we've been researching and applying to our life all the possible ways to build up your immune system. We took a trip to the, uh, we took a trip to a doctor in Canada, a Chinese doctor, and he treats people with herbs. And even his opinion was. Uh, do not completely reject traditional methods. You have to mix everything. You basically have to uh, do as much as you can. So traditional medicine, chemotherapy, and also supporting your immune system, building it up as much as you can. He believed that um, chemotherapy absolutely helps with cancer. There's yeah. plenty of studies that show, but he also believes that um, Chinese medicine, certain types of herbs are very helpful at supporting your immune system, which helps support the healthy cells that don't then get killed by the chemotherapy and your body can fight off diseases or whatever else comes right. your way when your immune system is lowered from chemotherapy. Już po zabawie przedstawienie się skończyło. Trwało jakieś całe 5 minut i teraz y, czeka nas y, półtorej godziny jazdy z powrotem do domu. People in Poland will probably think that that's insane, right? No, it's the American way. You know how people always... <coughs> we were always shown that in movies too, how uh, Americans drive six hours for Thanksgiving, sit with the family for two hours and then drive six hours back. Yeah, sounds right. <laughs> it's one of those things. Uh -huh. So we're not, we're not completely rejecting um, any information sent our way. Uh, those of you who emailed me privately or uh, send us messages in any way on Facebook or in comments or whatever, you do see the replies. You know, we're, we're, we're having conversation with everybody because obviously it's a imp uh, super important subject to us. It's subject number one in our life right now. Uh, but we have decided based on really, really extensive research and hours of Googling and reading and checking out everything possible about fighting cancer that uh, this is our course of action. We're going to trust the doctors um, and additionally we're going to try to support Blanis and myself, you know, I'm along for the right immune system as much as possible. And this is this is our way through this. This is uh, this is in our opinion what makes most sense in the current world. Uh-oh, I think you're gonna have to put them away. <laughs>